Wally. <laughs> Sorry, that was terrible. Hey everybody, I'm Crafty Ninja and I made an adorable Wally Starry Night Tumblr. This adorable little robot who carries a plant and a boot is one of Disney's most adorable characters. And I'm gonna show you how I made him step by step. So if you're ready, let's get crafty. So to begin, I started placing a thin coat of liquid Sculpey onto my cup and then brushing it on to cover the cup completely. And then I coated the entire cup in a thin layer of Super Sculpey. Then I blended the seam up really nice and made sure to get rid of any bubbles underneath the clay and then did the same thing to the bottom half of the cup and then I cut off the excess. Now I start tracing onto my clay where I want the swirl in my sky and the stars and the moon to get the right placement that I want for my cup. I did do the swirl and the stars by hand, but if you are not confident in that, you can print out a template and trace it onto your cup. Next, I printed out a basic line art version of this image that I wanted and I traced it with a ball tool onto my clay. Once I was finished with the tracing, then I start to bulk out the swirl in my sky by just rolling out some thin pieces of clay and just blending it into my cup. Then I get started on Wally. Now, Wally has been the most challenging of the Starry Nights I have done so far because getting that, f the angle that you want to make it look realistic was a little bit of a challenge, especially with his goggles because you want to make it look like they're goggles, but you're also working on a flat surface. But I just slowly add clay a little bit out of a time and I remove clay if necessary and I just keep bulking out until I'm happy with it. For the actual box portion of his body, I built it up slowly so it kind of had a mild diamond point where it would be in the foreground of the sculpt. And then I just blended it in and used this flat tool to help really accentuate that sharp edge. I'm doing my very best to make sure that there is more clay towards that point in the foreground and less clay near the cup part of his body and I just blend it in as nicely as I can. For the tracks, I just take a rolled out piece of clay and it's a little bit thicker on top because I wanted it to be more visible and I just blend it into the cup. Then I finish it off by placing these circles right in the middle to replicate like the gear portion of those tracks. Then I just do the same thing on the other side with the other track. Next I start to work on the boot and I made sure that it was a little bit thinner where the toes are because I wanted it to look farther away than the heel of the boot. 
And of course, we cannot forget his little plant. And I just take a little rope of clay to make the stem and just little pieces of clay to create the leaves. I almost forgot to do his eyes and I just take a small circle and place it right in the center of those goggles that he has and blend it in. For the stars, I just take some little balls of clay and flatten them out where I want the stars to go. I also place a C shape of clay right where I want my moon and I flatten it out and blend it in. Now I'm finally going to add the texture and I just use this cone tipped silicone tool and just create little random marks in the stars to create that paint texture. Then I also do the same thing with the sky in that swirly fashion that Van Gogh is famous for. Then I finish off the sky by drawing some lines into the swirl in the direction that the swirl is going and just really kind of getting that swirly motion that Van Gogh does. Then I finish off by adding some little balls of clay to the base to create the ground and I wanted it to look really rough and textured like he's maybe driving over a lot of dirt or trash and I just place these little balls of clay and then blend it in randomly. Then right before I baked him, I remembered I didn't add the track texture, so that's what I'm doing. I'm just drawing some lines into the tracks to create that look. And when I'm finished, I get him in the oven to bake. For the swirl, I use this light blue and I paint it all the way around the swirl, but while the paint is still wet, I brush in some white streaks into it to create that Van Gogh-like look. For some reason, my camera did not record the actual sky portion. I can tell you how I did it. It's just a dark blue, medium blue, light blue, and I do it exactly the same way as I do my swirl. You can also watch my Deathly Hallows tutorial to watch the exact process of my sky painting. But now I'm going to shift back to what I'm actually doing right now and I am painting the ground and Wally a kind of charcoal gray color because I wanted it to have a dark silhouette look but I didn't want it to be completely black. I painted his eyes white because I really wanted them to stand out in the darkness of all of the colors that we got going on here. Now because Wally is yellow, I really wanted to kind of give an allusion to the yellow that he is, but obviously it is also dark because it is a starry night. So I just wanted to give him some yellow highlights and I just placed the yellow where I thought most accentuated his silhouette. Then once I was happy with the yellow, I just added some little white highlights just to make it look a little brighter in some areas.
Then I just finished Wally off by painting his eyes black and added a little bit of white highlights to give those eyes just a little bit more life. Then to make this plant really stand out, I used a lighter green and just painted it completely this color with a little bit of white highlights. And just to add a little bit more color to the actual base, I just placed some more yellow highlights wherever I thought it looked good. And to finish off the entire cup, I painted the stars and the moon a yellow color and then added some white and light yellow highlights while it was still wet. And here he is, all finished. Isn't he so cute and adorable? Just looking up at the sky, waiting for Eve to come back and find him. I love Wally so much. He is so adorable, and he's one of my favorite characters in the Disney universe. Disclaimer though, the reason that this tumbler is matte is because I have not sealed it in epoxy or crystal act because I just ran out of time for this video. But be sure to know that I will be sealing it before it goes anywhere near anybody's lips. And if you plan to make this on a tumbler to do the same, just for overall safety. Also, if you guys are Star Wars fans, next month is May and for the month of May I will be posting a full month of Star Wars content in honor of May the 4th. So if that is something you guys are interested in watching, be sure to follow my channel so you'll be sure not to miss that. I hope you all have a great day and I hope you all remember to stay crafty.